Today I'm going to be reviewing and upgrading Lenovo's most recent Ultrabook flagship, the X1 Carbon Generation 9. Last year I reviewed the Generation 8 and really didn't find many upgrades over the 7th generation, but this time Lenovo has redesigned the Gen 9 and it includes many incremental improvements, making it a powerful little machine. The first thing you'll notice is the 16 by 10 screen aspect ratio. Lenovo went the way of Apple and increased the screen height. It's now starting to show up in the P-Series as well. Looking at the spec sheet, we can drill down into what's new. Thunderbolt ports are now version 4. HDMI is now version 2, allowing 4K video at 60Hz refresh rates. Ethernet extension connection has been removed and you'll need an external dongle if you want wired Ethernet. This laptop houses the new 11th generation Intel i5 and i7 processors, all quad cores. Base processor frequency is significantly higher, although max is about the same. With the new generation of Intel processors, we can finally use the higher RAM speed. In previous generations, RAM speed was limited by the processor, in some cases even shipped with faster RAM that was then run slower. Still, integrated Intel graphics only. I wouldn't expect that to change with such a small form factor. We can also now configure Carbon with 32 gigabytes of RAM. This is available on the i7 models only, but I configured mine with the maximum. It's soldered in though, so you cannot upgrade the RAM yourself due to the compact design. One SSD slot, but it's PCIe 4.0 and we're going to take full advantage of that by upgrading to the blazing fast Samsung 980 Pro. Lenovo has also increased the battery size by about 10%, and that's consistent with the increased mobile mark figures, but real world I was getting much less. Streaming video at 90% brightness, I was able to get 4.5 or 5.5 hours of use. There are a few screen options, touch is available at the lower resolution, but I went with the massive resolution 3840 by 2400. It's a great display, essentially 4K with the extra height for the 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Colors are vibrant and 500 nits brightness is always welcome in high ambient lighting conditions. Dimensions are slightly different with the redesign, but comparable. The weight is still just 2.5 pounds. You can order the laptop with Linux, but I purchased mine with Windows and will show the upgrade process for that. Before we get into the upgrades, there's a lot of commonality with the X1 Yoga Gen 6. They share the same hardware maintenance manual and the hard drive upgrade process will be the same. Just remember to remove any nano SIM card prior to opening and the pin as well if you're using the Yoga. Build quality is good. It feels dense, sturdy, still using high-end materials and magnesium alloy chassis. On the sides you'll have speakers, power button up top with fingerprint reader, a large trackpad, and signature track point. Privacy shutter allows you to cover the webcam when you're not using it. Stereo microphones at the top of the lid as well. There's a carbon fiber weave lid for the high resolution, others will be black. On the side we have the first USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port with charging, the second, USB 3.2, and HDMI. On the other side, just a headphone microphone jack and always on USB 3.2. Now the bottom has a slight lip. This keeps the bottom slightly elevated and helps with airflow on the fan exhaust here. Additional speakers on the bottom corners. I'm going to install a 2 terabyte Samsung 980 Pro SSD. Advertised speeds show that this drive is taking full advantage of the PCIe 4.0. You can clone your existing hard drive, but I'm going to start with a fresh install of Windows. In order to do that, you'll need to create a USB install media before you open it. Go to Microsoft's website and follow the instructions for creating a Windows 10 installation. You'll download a tool and it'll help you set up your USB drive. We'll need to disable the built-in battery before we open up the back. Turn off fast startup in your control panel power options. You can re-enable this after we're done. Restart the computer. When you see the Lenovo splash screen, hit F1. This will open the BIOS. Go to Config, Power, and down to Disable Built-in Battery. Click Yes and the computer will shut off. There are five captive screws holding the back panel in place. Loosen them all. I'll put a link to the hardware kit I used in the description. It's very easy to open this laptop. Start at the top here and gently pry it off. You'll notice how big the battery is compared to the rest of the components. The hard drive is under here. Processor under the heat sink connected to the fan. WLAN and external connection assemblies, and this is one big system board piece. Let's take our new SSD and remove the old one. Unscrew both sides. Lift up the drive bracket and it'll expose the existing SSD. Lift it up slightly and pull it out. Install the new drive, making sure the screw hole is lined up. Replace the drive bracket in both screws. To 
put the lid back on, start by lining up these tabs on the bottom. Snap the cover on and resecure the five screws. Now insert your USB stick with the Windows installation tool you made earlier. You'll need AC adapter power the first time since you disabled the built-in battery. It'll automatically be re-enabled after startup. Windows installer will start. Follow the instructions for a custom install. For some reason I had an error on the first install attempt. I had to restart, delete the partitions that were just created, and reinstall. It worked fine the second time, but was still unexpected. Follow the rest of the Windows installation steps. You'll want to download Samsung Magician for the new hard drive. Additionally, we'll want to get all the Lenovo drivers. Go to their support page, type in your model, in this case the Carbon Gen 9. Click Drivers and Software. Lenovo recommends their Vantage software, which can automatically download and keep drivers up to date, but you also have a manual install option. Here's the SSD that shipped with the laptop. I did both the before and after Crystal Disk Mark benchmark, and you can see a huge improvement in the sequential read and write speeds. That's it. Please feel free to engage in the community comments below, and thanks for watching.